Hello students, uh, today our topic is uh, income from other sources from income tax subject. See what is income from other sources under section 56. See in the income tax act of 1961, the income is divided into five heads of income. How many heads of income? Five heads of income. The first one is income from salaries. First head of income is income from salaries, which is already we have discussed. The second one is income from house property. This chapter also we have discussed in the earlier videos. The third one is income from business or profession. This also we have understood. Income from capital gains. Even in this chapter also we have discussed in the earlier videos. Now, the fifth head of income, the fifth source of income for an individual is income from other sources. Now, let us understand what is income from other sources. Under section 56 of Income Tax Act of 1961, any income which is not covered under the first four heads of income, any income which is which are not falling within these four heads of income, we call it as income from other sources. So, the incomes, the which the income from other sources are those income which should not be a salary income, which should not be house property income, which shouldn't be business or a professional income, and which shouldn't be capital gains. All such incomes other than these first four heads of income we call income from other sources. Now we will we have so many questions. What are the such incomes which falling under the head income from other sources? Now, if you look at the look at on the board, we have about 19 and more incomes which are falling under the head income from other sources. What are the such incomes? The first income is income received by employee other than his or her employer means if you receive any income from a person who is not your employer, who is not your company, though if they are company, though your company, they are not paying for the services which you are rendering to your employer, but you are rendering a service to the third party. So, sir, let us give clarity about this topic. See, Income received by employee other than from his employer. Say for example, I am a lecturer in a college. I am a teacher in a college. I am giving my services to the college or that in particular institute. And I am getting my salary income every month. <coughs> that salary income, whatever I am receiving from my employer is taxable under the head income from other sources. At the end of the semester or at the time of examination, I will act as an examiner for on behalf of the university and the university will pay me the examiner's fee. That means I will receive some remuneration from the university for the duties delivered from, by me for the university doing a evaluation job or valuation of your answer scripts or invigilation duty or setting up of the question paper. It is, I am not doing it for my institute or my college, I am doing it for the university purpose. So thereby, all such remuneration or income which I am receiving from the third party See, I am the first party, college is the third party. If I receive any income from the college, that is 
taxable under the head salary income. But here, since I am doing uh, examination duty or evaluation duty or setting up of the question paper, if I am receiving any income from the university, that such income is taxable under the head income from other sources. See, the very basic concept of income from salary is why we call it as when we call it as a salary is in between two parties there must be employer and employee relationship ship should be there employer employee relationship if i am working for someone they are my employers and their employee see this relationship won't be there in case of university and a teacher so thereby any income received as an examinership duty fee or evaluation fee all such income taxable under the head income from other sources. Next is a remuneration received by MLAs and MPs. We know these ministers are the public elected representatives and they are called as a servants of public and these people will be receiving remuneration every month. Say uh, today it's like uh, one MLA will get uh, around 50,000 rupees per month as a salary. See any salary received by MLA MP, it is taxable under the head income from other sources because MLAs and MPs are not government employees, they are elected people by, from the, by the public. And once if the term of their uh, power is over, if the term is over, five years term is over, and they won't be MLAs and MPs, and they don't get any type of salaries to the remuneration to these MLAs and MPs. Since there is no employer and employee relationship, again any income or remuneration received by MLA MPs are chargeable under the head income from other sources. So it's very clear now. Now next is director's fee. Who is a director? A director is one who is appointed by the shareholder or who is appointed by even the government also sometimes. But here directors are those who are elected by the shareholders and director is also one of the shareholder in the company and he is not an employee of the company. So he Director will be elected by the shareholders for and all the shareholders will pay some director's fee in attending the meeting and knowing what is the what is what happened in the meeting and director will keep giving information about what is happening in the company to all the shareholders and whatever the fee paid by the company to the directors which is a director fee, again no employer and employee relationship because director is a representative of the shareholder. Got it? Next is insurance commission. What is this insurance commission? Say if I am an agent of any insurance company and if I have given any business to the insurance company, I get commission. That commission is chargeable under the head income from other sources because I am an agent, I am not an employee of the insurance company. If I give business, I will get commission. If I don't give business, I will not get any commission. So thereby, here also, there is no employer-employee relationship. Next is underwriting commission. What is underwriting? See, taking the responsibility of selling the shares debentures of a company for the sake of commission. Here I am acting as a broker, I am acting as a, an agent middleman and company cannot sell the shares debentures to the public and they have given responsibility to sell such shares and debentures to the public. So these people, those who are undertaken the responsibility of selling, they will get commission. This commission is also called as underwriting commission. All of you got it? So usually 5% will be commission on shares and 2.5% commission on the debentures. Income from subletting the house property. See, income from house property, when we call it as a income from house property, there is a, a 
uh, one basic concept is there. What is house property? Any land or I mean to say that uh, any building which is appurtenant there to any there should be a building. There should be a building. What is the second basic condition? The basic thing is the assessee should be the owner of the house property. The assessee should be the owner. But in case of income from subletting the house property, see, I have taken a big house for rent. Say, for example, for 10,000 rupees. After taking that big house, I thought that it is too big for me. I thought it is too big for me. Half of the portion of the house property, I have subletted to one of my friends. See, I paid 10,000 rupees for the whole house, for the whole house. And I am subletting the half of the portion for 15,000 rupees. Or 1,000 rupees. See, I am paying 10,000 rupees rent for the full house, the whole house. Now, I am subletting 50% portion for 12,000 rupees. See, what is the rent for the 50% portion is only 5,000 rupees. Because if I am paying rent for full house, 10,000 rupees and half portion rent will be 5,000 rupees only. Right? Now, how much I am charging for the 50% portion? 12,000 rupees I am charging. So, 7,000 more I am charging. I am not the owner of the house property. I myself staying in a rented house property and I am subletting that to someone for rental purpose that extra rent or an excess rent chargeable on such house property subletting the house property is chargeable under the head income from other sources. So we got it guys. So that means I am not the owner of the house property. Okay. Next is income from open land. Say any income from uh, empty land. If I am given some empty land for an exhibition or I have given uh, some land for marriage purpose land. Okay. Only land. Not There is no building on there. Okay, so such income from land is also taxable under the income from other sources. Next is agricultural income outside India. See guys, any income received in India as in the form of agriculture, say agriculture income in India is fully exempted. Is fully exempted. But agricultural income outside India Foreign income, agricultural income is taxable under the head income from other sources. Next is income from markets and fisheries. If you are receiving any income from market, setting up the market and putting a, a temporary tents or a temporary sheds and if you are receiving any income or rent, all such are called as income from markets and fisheries also. Dividend from foreign company or dividend from cooperative societies. Say, if you have invested on the shares of foreign company or in a cooperative society, if you are a member of cooperative society and uh, get taken a, a membership uh, or a share membership and if you are receiving any dividend regularly every year, such income or dividend from foreign company is fully taxable under the head income from other sources. Next is interest on securities. See, if you have purchased any bonds, debentures or government bonds or non-government bonds and if you are receiving any interest on such securities is taxable under the head income from other sources. We have not many things to uh, discuss about this interest on securities. I'll come to the I'll come into the next video. Interest on bank deposits. If you have deposited any money in a bank, either fixed deposit or a savings deposits or recurring deposits or uh, any kind of a deposits, okay? Any interest if you are receiving which is fully taxable under the head income from other sources. Interest on excess payment of taxes. What is this interest from excess payment of taxes? See, last year I paid 1 lakh rupees extra taxes to the government that is excess payment of taxes and the income tax department was delayed in refunding such a, uh, excess income tax what I paid. 
if our income tax department is paid 1 lakh rupees plus interest on such a delayed period, such interest on delayed period will be taxable under the head income from other sources. Next is interest on loans lended to lended or interest on URPF. If I have lended money to someone for uh, some interest, uh, then such interest is also taxable under the head income from other sources. Interest on URPF, unrecognized provident fund. If you are an employee of a company or a, with an employer and if they are contributing towards your PF and which is unrecognized and whatever the interest which is paid or accumulated on such a uh, unrecognized provident fund, such interest is taxable under the head income from other sources. Next is the very important one is casual income. What is casual income? See, income if you are receiving casually, casually when you can receive by betting. See, it may be income from lotteries, income from horse races, income from card games or any kind of betting incomes, we call it as casual income. See, uh, there is no place for uh, charging taxes under, under these first four heads of income, such casual income. Because when you win uh, an income from lottery, you don't have any place to charge in this. Okay, so which has to be taxed under the head income from other sources. Next is income from royalties. See, uh, I have a land, there is a, a coal in the belt of the earth, okay, and I have given to the second party, uh, the, the party who is a mining company, who dig, my, dig the land and extract the minerals from the belt of the earth. And uh, some portion of uh, money, they'll give it me uh, regularly. It's a periodical payment. So regularly on the revenue generated from the uh, source of income. So such is called as a royalty income. Next is undisclosed source of income. Uh, even for royalty, I can, we can give uh, an example. Of if I have, uh, I'm an author of a textbook. If I'm an author of a textbook, and I have given my uh, manuscript of the textbook to a publisher and asked them to pay me, okay, royalty, okay, every year you have to pay me so much of money because I am the owner of the, the book, uh, I am the author of the book and if you publish and sell from the sale revenue, you have to pay me a, a part of the amount as an income, such income is called as a royalty also, undisclosed source of income. You have an income, but you don't have proper explanation about the source of income, how, where did you got it, how did you got it. Say, this is called as undisclosed source of income, which we have seen in many movies also. Okay, so the money which will be kept uh, uh, below the okay bed and uh, in the bathrooms and uh, they'll be hiding in so many places. Okay, and when the income tax authorities comes, they will not have any answer for the source of income where they got it. Okay, all such income, we can call it as a black money. Okay, the unaccounted money, which, which is also called as black money, unaccounted money. All such income is called as undisclosed source of income, which is taxable under the head income from other sources. Next is family pension. What is family pension? See, first if you remove the family, then we have only pension. What is pension? If the if a person, if an individual is working for a, an employer or a company, up to his service he will receive salary. Once if he retires, he will start getting the pension, if there any pension scheme is there. Am I right or no? So till he dies, he will get the pension. Till he will die, he will get the pension regularly from the employer. What if he dies? If he dies and if he has got a spouse, then the spouse will start getting the pension, such in pension received by the deceased person of the employee, deceased person of the employee, then it is called as a family pension. Say for example, Mr. X, he was an employee in a, a company and he retired and he was getting commission for 5 years. After 5 years he died and he had a he had a wife and wife will start getting the pension and such a pension received by wife on behalf of her uh, deceased husband is called as a family pension. So family pension is 
partly taxable and partly exempted and I will tell you about that uh, in later or else if you want uh, now itself I can explain to you. See, family pension. Family pension. See, what is the actual amount of uh, family pension you receive? That you take it here. Less, least is exempted. Least is exempted. What is that least amount is? One third of family pension received or maximum limit of 15,000 rupees. Whichever is lower, whichever is lower will be given exemption and the remaining amount is taxable family pension. Say for example, if I am receiving uh, say 45,000 rupees as a family pension during the year. This is the actual family pension I have received. And what is one third of 45,000 is? One third of 45,000 is 15,000 rupees. Now which is the least? You can take any one. So 15,000 rupees is accepted. And remaining 30,000 rupees is taxable. So you will get exemption of 15,000 rupees here because the least of these two is exempted and the remaining amount is taxable. Suppose if, they, if it is in, instead of 45,000, if it is 30,000, then one third is uh, 10,000. Now what is the amount of exemption you will get, you'll get is 10,000 and remaining 20,000 rupees will be taxable. Okay. This is about family pension. Okay. Next is cash gift of more than 50,000 from non-relative. What is this? Who is a non-relative? A non-relative means who is not your blood relation, blood relative. It may be, it may be a friend, it may be a colleague, it may be a peer, it may be a neighbor. Okay. Say friend may be a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a best friend a thick friend, whatever the friend it is and and also neighbor and peers and also even uh, colleagues also. If you are receiving any gift from a non-relative, if it is more than 50,000, full gift value is taxable under the head income from other sources. See, this cash gift I have clearly mentioned, it is not a kind gift, it is a cash gift. If you are receiving any cash gift from a non-relative more than 50,000, then we charge the tax. See, what is this more than 50,000? Say for example, if I am giving 49,900 rupees of cash gift to one of my friends, which is exempted from taxes because which is below 50,000 rupees, which is exempted. One of my close friends, was there, he had a birthday party, for his birthday I have given 51,000 rupees of cash as a gift. Now this is since more than 50,000 rupees which is chargeable to tax under the head income from other sources. Who will go into levy the taxes? Who will, who, will, who will have to pay the taxes? The person who receives the gift have to pay taxes, not the giver of the gift, only the receiver of the gift have to pay the taxes. And my friend has to pay tax on this 51,000. Got it? Okay, fine. Now, what happens if uh, a gift received from a relative? If any gift received from a relative which is completely exempted from taxes and whatever the cash gift uh, amount it is, which is fully exempted. There is one more point is that any cash gift received during the marriage occasion, any cash gift received during the marriage occasion which is completely exempted from taxes. Okay? So when you are getting married and if you receive any cash gift okay, from a relative and a non-relative, even though if it is a non-relative, even though if it is more than 50,000 from each of your friend or each of your colleague, it is fully exempted because the occasion of, of the gift it was marriage which is completely exempted. Guys, uh, I have explained you uh, almost uh, all the the sources of income from other sources and please 
just uh, watch carefully listen carefully if you have any doubts please put it in the comment definitely i will rectify it okay and uh, please don't forget to subscribe my channel sai study circle if you like this video please share this video to your friends and also forward this video to your friends thank you